G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we continue this off-season series talking about each individual AFL team's New Year's resolutions for 2024. It is that time of year, we're all making resolutions, so the point of this series is to talk about what teams might be thinking at a club level about 2024. And the premise is to try and pick out little uh, mini outcomes and goals that each club will have that will hopefully lead to the, a greater overall outcome. So I've done the Western Bulldogs, Eagles, Sydney, St Kilda, the Richmond Football Club, and today we're doing Port Adelaide. And I've picked out about eight resolutions that Port Adelaide could focus on to get better in 2024. I've been doing a whole heap of off-season content. If you haven't seen it already, I've done every team's best 22 for 2024, uh, which I'll include as a uh, playlist that you can click on. If you click the top right icon of this video, you can see links to other, uh, both Port Adelaide content and general AFL content. I've also gone through every team's best 22 to three years from now and this is the new series I'm on at the moment which is New Year's resolutions for each AFL team. Before we get into the video if you could do me a favor my analytics tell me that about one and a half thousand new viewers to the YouTube channel uh, watched a video on this channel this week uh, yet we only gained about a hundred subscribers so if you are someone that enjoys their AFL content or you're enjoying my content it would mean a lot to me if you click subscribe to this channel and help it grow so that I can get better at doing this in the future. But without further ado let's crack into the Port Adelaide Football Club and I've picked out eight outcomes that they should aim to achieve in 2024 to lead to a greater overall result. So the first one, uh, we'll get the easy one out of the way. Let's talk about their finals performances. So their first resolution is to have better finals performances. This year, we saw Port Adelaide at times be one of the absolute best teams in the comp. In fact, at one point throughout the year, uh, it kind of looked like Collingwood and Port Adelaide both looked like the prime candidates to win the flag. And then Port Adelaide had a little bit of a dip. But specifically talking about their finals performances this year, a straight sets exit doesn't do them justice in terms of how good they were at times in 2023. So specifically, in the first qualifying final, they lost by 48 point points to the Brisbane Lions, who are a formidable team for sure, but 48 points is still a fairly decent margin. And then you consider they backed it up with a home final performance in which they kicked nine goals, 16 against the GWS Giants, who made it all the way through the prelim. They lost that game by four goals, kicked one goal nine in the last quarter. And it has to be said, that it was a far cry between the Port Adelaide we saw in that final series versus the Port Adelaide for the first maybe 17 rounds of 2023. So generally speaking, they just couldn't click in finals. And I think their young midfield, which had performed so well throughout the home and away season, was probably just a little bit lethargic in this final series and couldn't get up. So maybe that's experience. But I also think back, that's probably three disappointing finals in a row for Port Adelaide when you go back to 2021 in that home prelim where they lost by 71 points. So hopefully this isn't an alarming trend. I'm sure it won't be. But I imagine the first thing on the list is if we get to finals this year, which I assume they will, make sure we show up in a much more meaningful way. The next point is around getting their new defensive dynamic to work. Uh, to simply put, Port Adelaide have transplanted in a number of key position players in general into their list this year, adding four. Uh, but specifically their back line, it's going to have a very new look and uh, feel to it in 2024 with uh, Tom Jonas obviously retiring. Uh, at times they've relied heavily as well on Trent McKenzie as a key defender and of course Elia Elia who is a great player. But they've traded in Asava Radagalia and Brennan Zerk Thatcher. So it's going to be a pretty new look team, especially factoring, I think it's almost certain those guys are considered starters in this team. So I'd imagine a tall back trio of Alia Alia, Radig Alia, that rhymes, and Zerk Thatcher. Now I wonder if there will be a teething process with this particular uh, new dynamic that they've got, but they'll want to get it functioning as quickly as possible. And generally speaking, Port Adelaide have done a good job of adding young players or like plays in their prime to replace some aging veterans. So Tom Jonas obviously retired, Scott Lysett in the ruck retired, replaced him with Ivan Soldo. So just getting these guys to play cohesively in a team system uh, is one of the first things they want to tick off in 2024. The next point is uh, probably an important one from a pride point of view. Uh, they're getting better performances in showdowns. So in 2023, we saw Port Adelaide you'd lose both showdowns for the first time since 2017, the year Adelaide made the grand final. Uh, the first one was in particular quite disappointing. They lost in the last quarter where Adelaide kicked five goals across 14 minutes. And they had a four-point lead and Port Adelaide ended up going down by, well, I think five goals in the end. The second one was even worse. They lost it by about 48 points. And, you know, I think Adelaide are a fiery good side. I know that's probably an inflammatory thing to say in a Port Adelaide video with Port Adelaide fans watching. But, you know, uh, being fair, Adelaide do have the scoring power to put teams to the sword as they did, you know, throughout 2023 at times anyway. But considering how good Port Adelaide were to, to go through this year and lose both showdowns to a, a rival team that 
didn't make the finals. I know they probably should have, but even still, Port Adelaide was the higher ranked team. From a prior point of view, and also just general accumulating home and away wins and losses, that could have been the difference between them getting a home final in week one. The next point is uh, probably from a more technical point of view, and that is to improve on their contested stats, generally speaking. So some interesting stats I got out of this year for Port Adelaide was that they were 11th in the league for contested possessions, they were 11th for tackles, and they were also number one in the league for giving away free kicks this year, which suggests the contested game, I mean, the free kick stat in itself is probably, I mean, that, that could include a variety of things, but in the contest is often where free kicks are won and lost. So Port Adelaide for a such a strong team to be 11th ranked in contested possessions and tackles does kind of suggest that that's one part of their game that they could tidy up to really become a genuine contender in 2024. The next resolution is around the continued development of Jason Horn Francis. And I know probably shouldn't focus in on one single player when coming up with goals for 2024. However, I think it's fair to suggest Jason Horn Francis, amongst others, obviously with Zach Butters and Connor Rosie, I think they, they certainly do make up a really important and powerful and high potential nucleus here at Port Adelaide. And considering what they gave up to get Jason Horn Francis, naturally his development is important. But the development specifically this year that can be achieved is he's played 41 games now and we've seen him in sort of a hybrid forward midfielder role. Uh, he had about 17 and a half disposals a game and impressively 4.8 clearances. So for a second year player to be winning con uh, clearances fairly consistently considering he wasn't a full-time midfielder and also kicked 16 goals from 24 games, he's absolute ticked the box and uh, that was a really good development year for him as well. And I think it's one of those things where because he got traded, we kind of forget how young he is as a second year player. But considering he has top line potential, he has the potential to be one of their absolute best players and potentially, you know, a top 10 player in the league one day. Considering that, his development will be an important one for Port Adelaide. And uh, therefore, it'd be cool to see him spend, you know, even more time at stoppages, winning clearances, and finding a real balance to his game that helps Port Adelaide as he passes 50 games this year. So I think it could be a really good year for or a really big year for Jason Horn Francis, and that would be an important win for Port Adelaide. The next resolution is about facilitating some real genuine competition for forward line spots. And I've got a couple of players in mind when I say that. So one of them is the battle, I suppose, for the number one key position forward, or number two, perhaps, behind Todd Marshall this year. But I'm talking about Ollie Lord versus Charlie Dixon. If we can see a scenario where Ollie Lord comes in and, and makes that spot his own and forces Charlie Dixon out, or at least makes it really tough for selectors in 2024, that would be a huge win. Ollie Lord had a pretty productive year this year. He played 13 games, kicked 15 goals, and kicked four in the qualifying final as well, and does shape to be a potential long-term player for Port Adelaide. He's 22 years old, 197 centimeters, great profile. By contrast, Charlie Dixon is 33, and you know I know that he battled injury and stuff like that, but probably we didn't see him at his best this year. Could that be the sign of aging? Is it far the time for him? I'm not gonna make that claim, however, 23 goals from 14 games. If they can get to a point where Ollie Lord is generally surpassing Charlie Dixon, I think longer term, that is really positive for Port Adelaide. And I'd also extend that to Mitch Georgiatis, who probably is more realistically competing with someone like a Jeremy Finlayson. Jeremy Finlayson is only 27. He turns 28 before the season starts, and he kicked 38 goals from 22 games. So, you know, that was a pretty good year for him. But Georgiatis, I think... Uh, maybe this is just my opinion, but 65 goals from his first 49 games is a sort of undersized key for it. Probably plays more like a third tall at AFL level at just 192 centimeters, but I think he does have the potential to be a really dynamic and dangerous player. And he's coming off that ACL, but if we can see Georgiatis come back and earn that spot ahead of Jeremy Finlayson, again, I think that's really healthy competition and will probably be a symptom of a really strong Port Adelaide team. And the final point that I will sort of rehash again, it's kind of connected to the finals performances, but generally speaking, tidying up the form slumps and in particular their form after round 17, we did see a different Port Adelaide after that to the one that we saw in the first 17 rounds. So specifically uh, after, I think it was like a 13 game winning streak. I didn't actually write that down, but they lost by 50 points to Carlton who admittedly sort of went on a tear after that. They lost at home to the Pies. They lost by 47 points to the Crows. That's probably the one that sticks out. And then they lost by 12 points to G uh, the Cats at GMA HBA. Now, to be honest, that is actually a pretty fairly good run of opponents. Like Adelaide is the weakest one and they are still very, very capable on their day. With that being said, Port Adelaide still 
showed up and just slightly failed the test four times in a row. They then finished the home and away season fairly well. You know, there was a big win over the Giants and then Fremantle, they beat in Perth. Then they beat Richmond in the final round by five goals. But either way, generally speaking, the team that came out after round 17 wasn't quite the almost premiership standard Port Adelaide we saw in the first 16 or 17 rounds of this season. So it's just about accepting the fact that there are form slumps, but you obviously want that form slump to not uh, affect you in finals. So I suppose what I'm saying is be more consistent, play that higher standard for longer, and then naturally that's going to be a key resolution for them in 2024. So that is my take on the Port Adelaide Football Club and their goals and outcomes for 2024. Let me know, Port fans in particular, where I went wrong, what you agree with or disagree with, or please add some more resolutions yourself that I may have missed as an outsider looking in. As always, I do appreciate you guys watching and supporting the channel. It does not go unnoticed. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.